In this video, we're going to answer one of the viewers' question, which is how to change the label base on click in a bar chart in Chart.js. So basically here, when we click on a specific button, we will show a matching label with that one. So this question was asked by one of the viewers here. So on this video here about the Chart.js bar chart, where I show you how to create a new bar chart structure, basically that's being used more often in uh, Chart.js documentation. Here, if you scroll down, you can see the question has been asked by Ashish Pandey. So first of all, special thank you for Ashish Pandey for, for, for asking the question. And this is what he says. Currently, I'm working with Chart.js and creating bar chart. How to set dynamic label name because I have one bar chart, but, but data updated based on click. I need to show on label name dynamically, or sorry, on the, on the label name dynamically based on click. So, in short, he has multiple data apparently, and then when he click on it, he want to show the matching ones with the matching labels. So probably he already have one part working. So let me show you exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to create then a fictional bar chart. What we can do here is just the basics. Let's go back here on chart.js, chart.js org. We're going to create a standard bar chart with some fictional data in there. And then after we're going to show dynamic values as well, plus the dynamic label. So I'm going to grab this code here by pressing on this button. And here I want to adjust this. I'm going to adjust this into the new way that I'm using consistently. And once I have that one, I just click here on getting started. I just get this as well. And then here, I'll just paste this here below. And I'm going to put this in a proper indentation. Uh, yes, all right. And then here, diff, and this will be a class. This will be a chart box. We're going to set the width to avoid it to scale into a larger size or infinity usually. So we say, yes, style. Then we say here, chart box and I want to make sure here this is a dot because it's the class width of 700 pixels so once we do this we have a fixed width here we should have this chart running now and you can see right now my setup has been adjusted I'm using now the local host here because I'm preparing now for the database structurings that one of the series that I'm working on as well so we have this here now we have all of this here and we have now our bar chart and what I want to do here is the following I'm going to create some fictional data let's say this would be our revenue revenue and in here this would be the revenue that would be fine and then I'm going to put in here well let's I'll just grab a color here that would be the blue color that would be fine I'm going to remove all of these and I'm going to assume the following Basically, it's this. That's what I'm going to do. We have another data, which is, for example, our cost and profit. Because I assume that that would be the case. And this is the reason why uh, the question was how to change the labels. is probably to, sh to start to grab the matching values. So I'm going to just delete all of the items, including the brackets, because we don't have an array here. I just want this to be a consistent color of blue, for example. All right. And then what I want to do is here, because we're talking about the label and the label is this here labels match with this here the revenue or basically with the legend sorry this is the legend so imagine the following we have this but now we want to change this i'm going to create here now uh, or before i create this i want to set this up into the 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 correct structure that is now being used and this is really important i want to continue on with this structure because the documentation is moving towards that and understanding this way of looking at uh, the chart is very big benefit for you. So this is there are basically three blocks set up We have here the config and we have here the render block. All right So basically in here all I will do is just get the data part just specifically this here Then we'll just cut this out and then we say here the uh, constant data equals let me put in here this and we just Put that in here, and then we say here, semicolon, all right. Next one will be, and if you want to know really deeper what we're doing here, I have the other videos, but I showed you before the, the basic video here, covering how to make a bar chart. That is the one that we're basically using here. So I will 
just go quickly through this because I assume you should know this or you should have at least the foundation. If you don't follow along here, if you want to know really deeper, check this video out. This chart JS bar chart. It's very simple and it covers how to do it the new way. So then we have this. And here we have basically the structure of this. All right. Grab that, put it in here. This will be removed. A comma only here. That's fine. All right. So just put it this. All right. Got this now all. I guess here the indentation doesn't work correctly here, but that's all right. So, all right. So I just assume this will be it. That's more than enough. I will not make it too much, too fancy. Just get it done. All right. Here, final constant, my chart. Why my chart? Because my chart here is the ID name. So we say here my chart equals, and then we say here new. We're going to create a new object, and the object name is chart. So, uh, so here's an in semicolon, and in here, basically we have this part here. You get this, comma, config. All right, no need to comma there. Now we're done here. Let's save this. We have now everything. Let's go back here, refresh. All right, everything works fine. So now what I want to do is I want to get this data set here as well. We're going to create a new function here, and this function will basically cover certain data sets. All right, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to create three buttons, and these three buttons, one would be for revenue, other one will be for sales or profit, and the other one is for the cost. So we create a button here, and in here we'll say this one will be, what we can do is I'll just make three buttons, all right, then in here, we can say the following. We say here on click. We're going to make a function that the moment we click on it, and then we say here on click, this will say uh, update label. Update label. Then in here, it will be the label. We can put in here the value. So I assume it probably will get from some database or PHP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in just some very basic PHP on this, and I in the future I will cover this more and more deeper. But for now, this would be more than sufficient. So we say here variable, we say here, um, we can say a label one equals profit. Oh, make sure there's double quotations in PHP. We say here, this is, oh, this would be label one would be uh, revenue, revenue. Label two would be the profit and then after you have the sales. So, or the profit and the other one will be cost. All right. There we are, so we just can grab this and then I will echo out these here. So in here, we're going to make a PHP, PHP that, or we can even do it like this, equals that, all right? This is just a shorthand, which makes it just faster, that's fine, we put in this here. So we say two and three, and of course here, here and here, this will be two and three, and I'm sure that you can loop this with PHP, but for now I don't focus on that so much all right so we have these here so you can see here these buttons are working now and i'm sure that if we um, click do i have on click nothing has been defined here so what we're going to do now is we're going to define these labels here so in here we can create a new function and this function is basically we can match up the labels here so what we're going to do here is we're going to when we click on this we trigger this update label basically or this function trigger the function and this function is called update label and here we can say label this is our parameter and so we grab that and then we can say here the following to do very straightforward is just basically this we need to pinpoint this here so how do we get this well since we have the different structure you might get confused so I'm going to grab the basic structure here first so you will understand it very fast so basically it's in here we start from my chart then you go to data, data sets, and then label. That's where we're pinpointing. What we did here in our code, since we have the structure, we have three different blocks, we broke it into these blocks, and then the structure is in exactly opposite order. Or basically, this here, the highest part, which is the very beginning, is as last, because this is dependent on this, and this is dependent on whatever is in here. All right? So that's basically what's happening here. So we have to here, that's why here, my chart as well and in my chart we go to data 
and in the data we go to data set to that label exactly same but you can see we go now from down up well there is another example it was from top to bottom but eventually the structure is the same it's just that the code uh, code ordering has been adjusted all right so we say here my chart now we say we go to data that once we go to data we have to go to data sets and this data set is zero as you can see here uh what we had here as well zero because this is the only data set we have then we label data and then we have to go to label here so and then label all right so what we want to do here then we can say for example my chart data data sets equals label name and the label name here depends on whatever we click here but we click here above all right so once we do this if we can say here console.log and we put in label you will see you will find it immediately plus what i want to do as well is i want to update it so i say my chart once we click on it, my chart dot update once we did that semicolon here save this go back here refresh all right and now if i click on this pay attention here when i click on this profit so as to become here profit you can see here the con uh, the console log also shows what we have all right so we have this but what i want to do now is just one more part which is well, I assume if you have the label, you probably also want the data. I assume you have the data already done, but if not, I'm showing you, I will show it to you or to the other people who might want to know, well, what, what happened, for example, if I click on profit, I want to see this instead of blue, should be green and the numbers should be matching as well, different numbers. And if I press on cost, I want this red with the matching numbers as well. All right, so let's start and work with this. So how we can do it? Well, basically we can get the values here or you can do it here above. I will just make it very simple. I will say here constant, and this constant will be called the profit uh, data equal, and then here we will grab the profit data here, like something like this, but then of course with some adjustment. So let's say we make here a profit of five, this will be profit of seven, here we have a profit of one, this will be a profit of two, this one has a minus one, for example, and this one will be just zero no profit at all all right so that's the profit data and of course we want colors as well so what kind of colors would we like to have now we have here let's say here profit color and we could grab a green color here i'll just grab this color here background color put it in here and then i will make it more green so this is red and this is blue remember this is rgb so i'm just going to say this is zero and this one is zero and then we have this greenish color here remove the comma here there you are and finally what we have as well is uh, maybe a profit border uh, profit uh, border I guess border color this is background color this is border color and here we could say just solid you just do the same one but just in solid color and then we have this I want to copy this here put it in there and then just get here instead of the profit we can say here cost and this will be cost as well and another cost and with this cost i want to make it red so i say here 162 red because remember this is rgb and r stands for red so that's it all right so once we have this the next thing i want to do here cost would be two uh five uh, i guess Two as well I'm not sure here I just I'm just making up numbers cost is always positive because it's always a cost unless you have something where the cost goes negative because maybe you get a refund or something I have no idea but most likely it's it's always a positive number in a sense of that there's always a increasing cost all right so we have this here and then what we could do here basically what we need to do here is also have the revenue set up so i'm going to give you a revenue and the revenue is just everything that we have here which would be this there i'm going to copy this and the reason i'm going to copy this is because i'm going to reassign these here below all right so we have this and then i can say here revenue data is this then i say revenue color equals this the variable of the revenue and then revenue border color equals this all right so we have this now 
And all of these here above is perfect because now we can start using this here as well. How would we do it here? Well, we could do an if statement to make it easy. And we can just say here the following. And then we just look, are we going to check here if label equals strict? And what will it be? Well, we can check here whatever we have. Um, well, basically, we have revenue. Well, we can say here first profit. I'm not mistaken, it was called profit. We can check here above. If this equals label one and label one is profit and cost. All right, exactly the same because it equals strict. In this case, once we have that, then we say here the following. And we say here my chart data data sets, but then dot data equals uh, profit data. All right, and then we have another one would be not profit data, but this would be border, profit border. And of course, we need to adjust this here as well. This would be color. I guess this is about color. Then we say here data, this would be background color with capital letter C. This will be um, border color with capital letter C as well. You can see here, this is the one we need. All right. So basically here we create an if statement. If this is true, in this case, show this. If this is something else, so what we're going to do is here, you can say cost, and I'm going this here. I don't do an if else. If you use if, it's easier to read than if you would use an if else consistently. So this is the reason why if is a better way to do it. But of course, here maybe you have items. We could maybe do a for loop here or etc. etc. But we have to see it. But this is probably the most easiest way for now. Let me say here cost, cost. And then here another cost, and then finally here we go back to normal is the revenue. Uh, revenue, all right, that's the one. Then we say here, revenue. And to copy this, this, and that. All right, so now I can remove this here. If I save this now, what will happen is, it will first of all we create an if statement or we create this. We will assign the label, and then we figure out what is the label name. If it's this. Give me the colors. If it's this, give me the cost related color. So basically everything with the cost related. And if we click revenue, it go back to revenue. So if I save this now and refresh, oh, uh, cost data has already been declared. So let me double check what I uh, did. Cost data is already declared. Number is 36. 36. Oh, all right. Sorry. This is not cost data. We have to delete, delete this one. Of course, you can only use one constant here. We already had it here, by the way. So I just didn't saw that. If I refresh here now, we have this. And now if I click on profit, we get here this. Oh, this should maybe be red, but that's all right for now. Profit should be zero, I guess. Maybe that would be a loss, um, but that's all right. We could make an if statement for that, but I will avoid that one for now. But basically then here, you can see here, this is the cost as well. So once we have this, we can adjust this. Matching labels, matching values and colors, and there you are. So this is basically how you would do from top to bottom everything here by updating with a click effect. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.